Well, officer, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit, he's a, feel got, me collar, Jack. Just feel this out and say I've had me collar. Oh, what have you got to say about this, then? Well, not a lot, not a lot <laughs> officer. Crumbs, it, I mean, when you were with the flying squad, did you find that your height helped you out in intimidating people? Very often. Goodness me. Except yeah. on a bus. Yeah. Well, when you not, doing, not very comfortable on a bus. But yeah. in the football matches and with villains, definitely. When you look at the stuff on, on telly, Jack, and you see these... Well, one of them was a defective, as I said, rather than a de detective. But when you see the more serious TV crime series and their representations of the police, are they fair? Are they accurate? Well, if we go back very briefly to the first one, like Dixon of Doc Green, marvellous for the public and marvellous for the police because he won every battle. You know, yeah. everything was so casual. And then Softly Softly was not too bad. Zed Cars. But then we got up to the... Uh, flying squad, the Sweeney, and um, I had to interview the people who were going to produce that series while I was at Scotland Yard as the chief superintendent up there, and it sounded marvellous, and it was. The first half a dozen uh, it was excellent, were excellent. They based it on real jobs on the squad, and uh, there was violence, but very little, uh, and common sense, and then suddenly they went over the top walking into a place to search it and kicking the television in. And, and then, you've never done that? Oh, oh no, of course not. No, but on the screen, it looks very bad, doesn't it? Is it because I, there isn't really... Is it because in, within police work, there is actually a degree of boredom and it's not all glamorous and excitement and, and glamour and excitement and therefore they feel it wouldn't be quite such good telling. They have to put a bit more glamour and excitement in. Well, that's what happened. They went and... Uh, and what really put us off, although we didn't fall out with John Thor, we said have a drink with him in our tank and that and water. In your tank? In our tank. It was a bar in the basement of the Scotland Yard and it was very useful. You, you used it as a reserve room. Called really. the tank? Yeah, very handy. Because that's but where you went to get tanked up. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> but the one that got us all into trouble with our wives, of course, is the one of the series. Uh, John Thor has been given permission to keep observation from a pub on, on the scene of a robbery that's due to take place. <laughs> and of course, within an hour, he's in bed with the, the, the landlady and running, running the series from the telephone the side of the bed. Now, that didn't go down well. <laughs> that know, was a bit too close to the truth for you, wasn't uh, it? Uh, <laughs> 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 <That hurt>. <laughs> 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 what about... I mean, w recently the papers have been full today, particularly. Um, there are several series on television now. There's one called Gangsters, there's another mm -hmm. one called Underworld, mm -hmm. which is interviews with former, it has to be said, <laughs> criminals, big names from the criminal underworld, and the fact that their role is now being glamorised. I mean, do you think these programmes do make criminals too glamorous? Well, both these two series you've mentioned, as far as I'm concerned, are going to shock the public because I'm certain the average member of the public wouldn't believe it. If we sat down having a drink with someone and told them somebody got a pliers out and smashed somebody's toes, they think, oh... He's adding a bit there. But in point of fact, the two you've mentioned, the two teams, the Richardsons and the Crays, they were animals. I mean, I wouldn't want to put the train robbers in the same league with violence as those two teams. They were just natural, violent people. Frightening people. Did you get and frightened these, yourself? These, no, because when you're in the law, you've got that behind you. <laughs> and you need it, and you need the public support, and that's what really is very important these days. How does it make you feel when you see... I mean, there you were, you, you were involved with... Trying to get Ronnie Biggs back. You were involved yeah. in, in the great train robbery. When you see a film like yeah. Buster, yeah. with Phil Collins playing, yeah. you know, yeah. Buster Edwards, how does it make you, as an officer yeah. on the case, feel? Uh, well, my first reaction, and I've said this publicly before, is the fact that I'd sooner see these sort of people earning money legitimately than going out with an iron bar or a shooter. In other words, although I went against one particular uh, programme, the late uh, Hartley, Richard, is it Richard Hartley, had a programme where he interviewed about eight or nine of the robbers who had been recently yeah. freed. And, uh, you know, he spoke to them and they just casually said, oh, yes, we've done this, we've done that. And at the end of it, the audience just cheered and clapped them. And I thought, well, sort of if I had a 17 or 18-year-old son yeah. listen to that, they're like Robin Hoods. So we can't afford to do that. But after all those years looking for you, you eventually went and met Ronnie Biggs. So what mm. did you make of him when well, you met him? I'd like to explain why, because morally, I, when I left the job 14 years ago, I retired after 30 years in a job, I, I was asked by a paper to go out, when I go out there <coughs> and give him an interview. 
And I said, no, morally it's wrong. But then when it comes to this 30th anniversary, I suddenly thought, well, I was asked. I originally said no, but I thought, well, he's been over the side for 28 years. Yeah. He's a man of 64. I've been retired 14 years. And one or two other things that have happened with other people in the world. And I thought, well, rightly or wrongly, I'd love to see how he's living out there. Did you take to him? And I went out. I won't take, you can't take to a villain, but you can respect him. And mm. I'll tell you why I respect him. One, he's decried any violence and decried from the word go of the kosh. There was a kosh used mm. on the driver. Yeah. And although they say he died from that, I don't know. Some years later he died. <coughs> but he certainly, certainly never worked again. So not, not like Well, so I, I, so, but he, he is a likeable rogue, as you mm. often hear. And mm. I had the access to his file years ago. So I could tell you he had no violence behind him. And I went out there and I was quite surprised to see that his son, who's 18, Michael, who was being carried when I nicked Ronnie Biggs mm. in 74, was still being educated. It's been great to talk to you. Slipper of the yard, Jack Slipper. <laughs> <laughs>